Hello, bonjour, nomoshkar, hola, estu. Welcome to the second week of statistical mechanics, algorithms and computations from the physics department of École Normale Supérieure. Last week, we studied simple problems in statistics. Children on the beach, discrete pebble games, people walking around on the Monte Carlo heliport. In the second week, we move on to study and to simulate model systems in physics. Particles with positions, velocities and interactions using a statistical approach. That this is at all possible and exact is one of the great legacies of physics. The entire program of this week is to motivate, define and illustrate the statistical approach in the very famous model of two-dimensional hard spheres, so-called hard disks. This model is at the center of physics in particular of statistical mechanics. Note, when we speak about hard disks, we mean idealization of these objects, not of computer hard disks, the memories in our laptops. In this lecture, lecture 2, we will introduce the model of hard disks and also start simulating it. Hard disks, which are idealizations of billiard balls, move as free particles whenever they are not in contact with each other or with a wall and obey simple reflection rules whenever they are in contact with each other as you see here, in an actual simulation of Newtonian dynamics. Building on what we did last week, we will also introduce direct sampling and Markov chain sampling algorithms. We thus scrutinize the interface between classical Newtonian mechanics and statistical mechanics. We will see that in the statistical approach any two configurations of hard disks must be sampled with equal probability, just as we did last week for pebbles on the heliport or on the Monte Carlo beach. In tutorial 2, we will connect the equiprobability concept, a basic version of the celebrated Boltzmann distribution, with the central notions of statistical mechanics, namely the partition function, the free energy, the phase space volume, and the virial expansions. In homework session 2, our main concern will be, just like last week, on practical computation. We will actually check that the Newtonian dynamics of four hard disks perfectly agrees with the statistical approach. We will then analyze and interpret the output for this very simple problem. The material of this week is roughly as difficult as the one of last week. We will move to the central notions of statistical mechanics, but we will discover and develop all the concepts using our algorithmic approach. We will remain perfectly self-contained, and you don't have to have already taken a course 
in statistical physics or thermal physics in order to follow. So, let's get started with week 2 of statistical mechanics, algorithms and computations. What you see here is a configuration of four disks, red, blue, yellow and green, with given positions and velocities at time t equals to zero in a box going in x from zero to one and in y from zero to one. Here is the time evolution of the disks moving about the box like billiard balls. The dynamics of this system, for example from a configuration at t equals to zero, consists in straight line evolution up to the next event. This event may be a wall collision with incoming angle equal to the outgoing angle. Like with real disks, there are also pair collisions where the velocities change according to the rules of an idealized billiard without the complications of real systems such as torque or friction. The collision rules are quite easy to write down. Let us now describe in detail the event-driven molecular dynamics algorithm invented by Alder and Wainwright in 1957. It solves the Newtonian dynamics of the system without any approximation. Starting from an initial configuration at t equals to zero, we must compute the next event. This event may be a wall collision or a pair collision. If it is a wall collision, its time is given by the minimum of the wall collision times of the red, the blue, the yellow and the green disk taken individually. Look here. The red disk is moving down and to the left. Its wall collision time, disregarding the three other particles, is the minimum of the times at which it would hit the line x equal to zero and y equals to zero. The second type of events is a pair collision. For example, here of the red and the blue disk. A pair collision takes place when at some future time the distance between the two disks is equal to twice the radius. We can compute this time using a quadratic equation. When the two disks are approaching each other, the pair collision time is the minimum of the two positive solutions of this quadratic equation. Otherwise, the pair collision time is infinite. The minimum of the six pair collision times and the four wall collision times gives us the next event in the system here at time t equals 0 0.42813, a number that we can compute to as high a precision as we want. We can then click through the events here, the first event, a pair collision between the red and the yellow disk, closely followed by the second event, a wall collision of the blue disk 
then the third event, the fourth event, the fifth event, the sixth event, and so on. To conclude our description of the event-driven molecular dynamics algorithm, we realize that we must not collect events, but rather make a movie going from time t to t plus delta t, t plus 2 delta t, or to make things simple from t equals 0 to t equals 1 to t equals to 2, t equals to 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Let us now ask a few questions. Question 1. Why is Alder and Wainwright's algorithm of molecular dynamics called event-driven? Is it because answer 1, its invention was a major event in the history of science? Or is it answer 2, because the algorithm moves forward in a sequence of collisions called events? Of course, the correct answer is answer 2. Although it is true that the invention of molecular dynamics turned out to be a real big thing. Question 2. Consider the sequence of configurations at regular time intervals that we just saw rushing through from time t equals to 0, t equals to 1, 2, 3, and so on, up to infinity. On which fraction of these pictures do we see two disks in contact, or one disk in contact with the wall? Answer 1. The probability is equal to zero, exactly. Answer two. The probability is very small, between one and ten percent, depending on the time interval between frames. Answer three. The probability of contact is equal to one hundred percent because the algorithm is driven forward by collisions. Answer 1 is correct. Common sense and powerful mathematical theorems tell us that there is a finite number of events per unit time interval. So the probability to have an event at time equals to 1.000000 and so on, or at time to 17.000000 and so on, is exactly equal to zero. You will not see any collision events in these frames taken at integer times. Question 3. In the event-driven molecular dynamics algorithm, we suppose that a pair collision or a collision of a particle with a wall constitute the next event. Isn't it possible that the next event is rather a collision of three disks or a pair collision taking place at exactly the same time as another wall collision. No, this is not possible. Common sense and powerful mathematical theorems, again, just like in question 2, 
tell us that the probability of one event taking place exactly at the same time as another event is equal to zero. With finite precision arithmetic on our computers, these exceptional events may have to be taken into account in the treatment of errors. The event-driven molecular dynamics algorithm exactly solves the hard disk's equations of motion under the assumption that the calculation of collision times, velocity changes, positions and so on is done with infinite precision. This cannot really be achieved on a computer. But the question arises whether it matters that in Python, as in other languages, real numbers are truncated to finite precision. It is easiest to answer this question by pitting different versions of the same event-driven molecular dynamics algorithm against each other. The two versions of the four-disc molecular dynamics calculations that are identical at t equals zero remain very similar at the initial collisions, but then completely get out of step after a few dozen collisions. This is an extremely small number compared to the million or so collisions that we can compute on our computers per second. This is quite strange. Our results for computing times as small as a few microseconds are exact yet uncontrolled. We may drive up the precision levels using special number formats like 100 significant digits, 1000 significant digits, 1 million significant digits that are available in Python as in other computer languages. But this strategy cannot defeat the onset of chaos, that is, cure the extreme sensitivity of our calculation to the numerical precision. It is impossible to control an event-driven molecular dynamics calculation for a few billion iterations. Chaos in the hard disk system has its origin in the negative curvature of the disk's surface. This magnifies small differences of the trajectory at each pair collision and is very well known to whoever has played billiards. On the other hand, chaos is the main reason why, even for a finite system of hard disks, we can describe it by statistical mechanics, as we will discuss in a few minutes. For the moment, we considered Newtonian dynamics, which is completely deterministic. Before moving on to the statistical approach, please take a moment to download, run and modify the programs. On the Coursera website, you'll find the program eventdiskbox.py, which computes the time evolution, and the program eventdiskboxmovie.py, which produced the nice graphics output that you saw all along this section. Check them out for yourself. Both the wall collisions and the pair collisions are programmed in a few lines. And there are absolutely no approximations besides the finite precision of our calculations.
the event-driven molecular dynamics algorithm of the last section can be written down in a few dozen lines, as we saw, and it allows us to follow the ballet of disks approaching and flying away from each other along intricate, even unpredictable trajectories. In doing so, however, we engage on a computational project which is much more complicated than what we need. To continue, we again consider the configurations that we generated just a few moments ago. From a physical point of view, these configurations have kinetic energy, as we will discuss two weeks from now. But their potential energy is zero if they have no overlap and is infinite if they have an overlap. Configurations with overlap are simply forbidden. Ludwig Boltzmann, at the end of the 19th century, boldly conjectured that any configuration with the same energy also have the same probability to appear. For hard disks, it is the quintessence of Boltzmann's statistical mechanics that all configurations A and B of hard disks have the same statistical weight, pi of A equal to pi of B. We already encountered this equation last week in our Monaco games, and A and B were pebble positions. We sampled these pebble positions with a random number in X and a random number in Y. Now we generalize from the children's algorithm on the beach to a direct sampling Monte Carlo algorithm for hard disks. We first place the red disks as a random number in x between sigma, the radius, and 1 minus sigma, and y, another random number between sigma and 1 minus sigma. The red disk has been placed at a random position. We do the same for the blue disk, the green disk, and the yellow disk. Fantastic! Congratulations! We have placed the four disks at random position. In total, we have produced a random configuration of the four disks as called for by Ludwig Boltzmann. Let's do it again. Let's place the red disk at a new random position inside the box. Then the blue disk. Then the green disk. Ouch! We have generated an overlap. What should we do now? You might be tempted by simply taking away the green disk and try to place it again. But this is wrong. The correct solution is called tabula rasa. It consists in wiping out the whole configuration and in starting again from an empty box with the red, the blue, the green, the yellow disk until you succeed. We will spend a good part of this week's tutorial to make sure we completely understand why we have to implement the tabula rasa rule and why this allows us to sample a random configuration of hard disks. Before moving on, please take a moment to download, run 
and modify the programs. On the Coursera website, you will find the program directdiscsbox.py that implements the direct sampling Monte Carlo algorithm. It samples one configuration of four disks. Its key element are the random positions in X and in Y between sigma and 1 minus sigma. Four times we generate such a random position and check for the minimum distance with the disks we placed earlier. If this minimum distance is smaller than 2 times sigma, twice the radius, we know that we have an overlap. We then break out of the construction and start again from scratch. On the website, you also find the program directdiscboxmultirun.py that generates many such configurations. And as usual, the program directdiscboxmovie.py that generates nice graphics output that you see here. I can assure you that the sequence of configurations that you see here is equivalent to the output of the molecular dynamics calculation if you erase time information scramble the sequence and also erase the velocities. Then these two sequences are equivalent and we have arrived at the center of statistical mechanics. Direct sampling for hard disks works only at low density and for small particle numbers, as we will discuss in detail in this week's tutorial. To make progress, we move to the more general Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm. Let me first remind you of the algorithm Markov Pi that we dis discussed last week. You form a configuration A with positions x and y, we moved to a configuration b by little moves delta x and delta y that could be positive or negative. Detailed balance imposed that the transition probability from a to b had to be equal to the transition probability from b to a in order to satisfy equiprobability pi of a is equal to pi of b. Let us now apply the same reasoning to hard disks. Consider here a configuration A of four hard disks. A move consists in picking one of the four disks, for example the blue disk, and making a little displacement delta x and delta y that can be again positive or negative to a configuration B. The detailed balance condition is satisfied with pi of A equal to pi of B if we move with the same probability from A to B as we move from B to A. It can also happen that the move from configuration A is rejected as it creates an overlap. In that case, we remain at the configuration A for the next iteration. In Python, this gives the following program, Markov Disks Box .py, that you should download from the Coursera website, run and modify. The key element is the random choice of one disk whose coordinates we modify a little bit. The new configuration is tested for overlaps. And if two disks are getting too close, or if we have an overlap 
with the wall, we simply remain with the configuration A. Otherwise, we accept the new configuration. This precise algorithm for this model of hard disks was introduced by Metropolis et al. in a famous article of 1953. On the website, you will also find the algorithm Markov Disks Box Movie.py that produces nice graphics output shown here. You will see that there are correlations between subsequent configurations and sometimes two subsequent configurations are identical. This corresponds to the piles of pebbles that we created last week. This algorithm samples the same distribution as the direct disks algorithm. As discussed in last week's tutorial by Vivian, we must check, in addition to the detailed balance condition, that we satisfy irreducibility and aperiodicity. Aperiodicity is trivial to check for our algorithm. But in order to satisfy irreducibility, we must avoid situations as the one shown here, where the blue disk remains in the upper right corner up to infinite times. For small systems with a small number of particles, we must go to small disk radii, as shown here, where the disk move around the whole system. But for larger systems, this is not a problem. And the Markov disks algorithm remains irreducible up to very high densities. In this week's homework session, you will show, using numerical simulations and up to your numerical precision, that the event-driven molecular dynamics calculation and the Monte Carlo simulation give equivalent results for thermodynamic quantities. This means that the equiprobability hypothesis formulated by Boltzmann is satisfied. This equivalence between Newtonian deterministic mechanics and statistical mechanics is called the ergodicity hypothesis. It certainly does not follow from simple principles like time reversal invariance or detailed balance. The proof of equiprobability has presented a formidable mathematical challenge. It was once believed to hold only in the limit of infinite number of particles. Mathematical research has gone very far in actually proving the ergodicity hypothesis for the special case of hard disks and hard spheres and already for a finite number of particles. The first milestone result was obtained by Sinai in 1970. He proved that for two disks with periodic boundary conditions, the hypothesis was actually satisfied. Very recently, mathematicians like Simani have proven that a finite number of hard disks actually satisfy the ergodicity hypothesis. So you can be sure that what you will do for your homework this week stands on very solid mathematical grounds. In conclusion, we have plunged in Lecture 2 of Statistical Mechanics, Algorithms and Computations into the foundations of statistical mechanics. The hard disk model that we have studied is special in that all legal configurations have the same potential energy and therefore 
the same statistical rate. This model has been instrumental for the development of statistical mechanics and also for the development of molecular dynamics and of the Monte Carlo method. Next week, we will study the very rich phenomenology of this model, which is at the basis of the physics of liquids, among others. In the meantime, have fun with tutorial 2 and with this week's homework. It remains for me to thank you for your attention of, for this session. See you again in other sessions of Statistical Mechanics, Algorithms and Computations.